The next key knowledge area that we'll be studying is acute response to exercise. It's important to understand what the term acute means. It does mean a short term change. So the body responds to the demands of exercises by making a number of physiological short term changes to the cardiovascular, the respiratory and the muscular system. Once exercise is stopped, these three systems will return back to a pre-exercise state. This page shows a quick summary of the acute responses that occurs in each system. We can see in the respiratory system, we see changes in ventilation and diffusion. The cardiovascular system, we see changes in oxygen consumption, changes in AVO2 difference, changes in cardiac output, changes in venous return, changes in blood pressure, changes in, in the redistribution of blood flow. And in the muscular system, we see changes in body temperature, changes in muscle recruitment or motor recruitment, changes in energy substrate levels and changes in lactate. So let's first start by looking at the respiratory system. That does involve the lungs and obviously the passageway where we bring air into the body. It also involves the diffusion of gas. So it's important to remember that the respiratory system is, is involved in the delivery of oxygen and the removal of carbon dioxide from the working muscles. Once we start to exercise, ventilation is stimulated by messages uh, that are sent from the brain to the working muscles to basically allow us to get increased oxygen uptake. So our body does two things. It increases the rate and the depth of our breathing. Ventilation is the term that we refer to the total amount of oxygen that we're actually um, inhaling um, in our body per minute. Uh, and it's an equation of our total volume, which is expressed in litres, by our respiratory rate. Total volume is the amount of air expired per one breath. And obviously the respiratory rate is referring to the number of breaths per minute. This graph shows that at rest, our respiratory rate is around 14 breaths per minute. At submax exercise, uh, we've got 32 breaths per minute. And then when we're engaging in maximal exercise, it increases dramatically, somewhere up to 50 breaths per minute. Total volume tends to do the same. We see an increase from 0.5 of a litre at rest to 2.7 litres um, during submax and 4.1 litres during maximal exercise. Ventilation response, our minute ventilation, goes from 6 litres per minute to 78 litres per mi minute to a whopping 195 litres per minute. The last parameter that we see cha that changes in our respiratory system is the diffusion of gas. Gas exchange occurs in the lungs at the alveoli capillary interface and the tissue capillary interface. So at one site it occurs in the lungs and at the other site it occurs at the muscles. The diffusion of gas um, happens from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. So when we're exercising there is a greater demand of oxygen in our blood. Therefore we see a high concentration of oxygen moving from inside our lungs from the air that we've breathed in, breathed in across that membrane into the blood. And we see the opposite occurring um, with CO2, where the CO2 gradient is much higher in the blood and much lower in the air that we've breathed in. Therefore, gas starts to move outside um, our blood vessels and it gets diffused across the membrane into the air that we expel. And the same thing happens at our muscles where we see the movement of oxygen and this movement of CO2 moving from an area of high pressure or high concentration to an area of low concentration. So exercise um, itself places a huge demand on our body's need for oxygen. We see an increase in ventilation, uh, we see increase in tidal volume and we see the increase in respiratory rate. Uh, we also see the increase of gaseous exchange um, at both sites where diffusion occurs. Now the cardiovascular system is responsible for transporting oxygen around the body. So we see slightly different parameters um, changing. We see an increase in cardiac output, which is the total um, amount of 
blood that we pump around our body per minute. And that's expressed as uh, in, in the equation of heart rate, so beats per minute, multiplied by the amount of blood that is actually ejected from the, from the left ventricle with each beat. So that's our stroke volume. At rest, the heart only eject, ejects about 40 to 50% of the blood in the left ventricle. Therefore, when we have a stronger ventricular contraction during exercise, um, this results in more blood being pumped around or ejected from the left ventricle and therefore the rise in stroke volume. Heart rate plays a vital role in increasing our cardiac output. So during submaximal exercise, it increases until oxygen demands have been met and we see that plateau or steady state. Now at maximal levels, it continues to increase in a linear fashion until the maximal heart rate is achieved. Take your time to pause this video to have a look at this graph and it's just important to note that this is the total cardiac output during submaximal exercise. Here we see stroke volume and heart rate itself. Moving on to blood pressure, blood pressure also increases um, when we start to exercise. Now blood pressure is represented, represented by our systolic blood pressure over our diastolic blood pressure. So our systolic blood pressure is the pressure in the arteries following the contractions of the ventricles. So as soon as the, the heart contracts itself, we see that there is an increased pressure on the artery walls. That's our systolic blood pressure. It's usually around 120 um, millimetres per, per, of mercury at rest. When we exercise, we see somewhat of an increase during aerobic activity and we see a, a, a much greater increase during um, work that we'd see that has a, a greater training load, such as weight training. So as you can see, um, the systolic blood pressure increases quite considerably. Now, diastolic blood pressure doesn't actually increase when we exercise. That's because the diastolic pressure is the pressure in the arteries following the contraction. So generally we always see diastolic pressure staying, staying, staying somewhere around 80. So have a look at this graph we can see that the purple line is the diastole so there we can see it's pretty much unchanged um, and then we see the systolic blood pressure increasing um, quite dramatically. Um, so we can see that's, that's up here. AVO2 difference is the oxygen concentration in the arteries compared to the venules. So generally when we're exercising, we'll see that the muscles are extracting oxygen and, and the more oxygen that's required, the more um, the more it, the muscles will actually extract. So we, we see that as we exercise, our AVO2 difference will increase um, as a direct result of the intensity that we're engaging in. So at rest, the arterial blood releases as little as 25% of the oxygen, which means we don't actually um, extract all the oxygen that we're pumping around our body. And in fact, 75% of it's returned back to the heart through our venous blood. Now during exercise, our muscles are, have a, a much larger demand for oxygen. Therefore, it starts to extract larger amounts of oxygen from the blood and we see an increase in AVO2 difference. Um, having a look at this graph we can see at rest the oxygen concentration in the blood um, sort of estimated around 20 mils per 100 mils of blood so it's 20 mils of oxygen to 100 mils of blood um, and then oxygen uh, concentration in the venules is 16 mils so we can see the difference there is 4 mils of oxygen per 100 mils of blood. Now, during exercise, we'd see this amount increase. So we can see here that now, instead of 16 mils being returned in the venous blood, it's, it's dropped down quite significantly to four mils per 100 mils of blood. So the actual um, oxygen cost, so the amount of oxygen that the muscles are extracting, is 16 mils per 100 mils of blood. So we can see that the AVO2 difference has increased dramatically. And that's because um, our muscles uh, have a greater demand for oxygen. The redistribution of blood flow um, is something that happens as a direct result of two mechanisms. Vasoconstrictions, where we see that the, the arterioles um, start to narrow 
um, and vasodilation where we see the arterioles start to open up. Now when we start to exercise there's a greater demand for oxygen at the working muscles. So we see a vasodilation to blood vessels to the muscles and we see a vasodilation constriction to the blood vessels um, that are going to areas of the body that are inactive um, such as the intestine or other areas that are not really needed during exercise. So here we can see at rest um, we can see that muscles are receiving 20% of the blood flow, liver is 27, kidneys is 22 um, and so on. And then there's another. Now, as soon as we start to exercise, you can see the amount of oxygen that's getting pumped or the amount of blood that's being pumped to the working muscles has jumped up considerably. It's now at 84%, whereas before it was at a, a very small 20%. So we can see that our body is very clever at shunting and pushing oxygen and blood supply to where it's needed. And in this case, it's definitely at the working muscles. And that's a direct result of vasoconstriction and dilation. Now we also see that there's an increased blood flow to working muscles, which we've covered. There's an increase of venous return, which basically means that, yep, we've got increased cardiac output, therefore we're going to have more blood returning to the heart. And that um, process happens because, one, our muscles are moving, so they're acting as a pump. We also have a respiratory pump, so our abdominal pressure when our diaphragm um, uh, expands and contracts we see that that helps to pump blood back to the heart and we also have vasoconstriction um, as well. Blood volume um, generally will decrease during exercise um, as well. All right so let's just quickly look at the muscular system. We see that there's an increase in muscle recruitment which we'll start with. So having a look at this, we can see that obviously if we've got an increased blood flow to working muscles, we're going to have the muscles using greater amounts of oxygen. Therefore, there's going to be, um, there's also going to be an increased number of motor units recruited. Now, this is largely dependent on the speed and the strength required. The more strength or speed that's required in an exercise, the more muscle, motor units our, um, our body will recruit to do that, that work. We see that there's a decrease in energy substrates, which basically means that, yep, as we exercise, we're going to see a decrease in our fuel, which um, is quite obvious because our energy systems will be madly trying to resynthesize ADP to ATP. Um, slight typo there. Um, we see a rise in lactate, and that's due to an increase in our anaerobic production of ATP. And we also see that, it's heat, that heat is going to be produced in our working muscles, and that's because it's a byproduct of our chemical fuel um, being released. So take some time to have a look through motor unit recruitment. Um, we will go through over this in class, but largely, um, a motor unit always contracts maximally, but the thing that determines um, the force is how many motor units we actually um, recruit to do that amount of work. So um, the, the, the bigger the force, the more motor units that our body will recruit to do that work. We see an increase in consumption of energy substrates, which we've gone over, so decrease in PC, de decrease in glycogen. Um, and obviously that will be very different for the type of athlete that we are, um, we are looking at. Uh, so a marathon runner in comparison to a 100 metre sprinter. So take your time to have a look through these, um, these graphs. Uh, increased lactate production, which we've mentioned, and an increase in body temperature. Take your time to go through each one of these multiple choice uh, questions. So feel free to pause. And that's the end of our PowerPoint for acute response. I look forward to chatting to you guys about this in class um, and, and getting stuck into it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.